20 years, 20 years of the most goaded superhero of all time. I didn't tell y'all, Spider-Man is the greatest superhero of all time. And it's been 20 years. The only thing to finish this off is a West Side Live Miles Morales movie, okay? It's in the works, bro. <laughs> it's in the works. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, West Side Live. We're here for a Spider-Man movie. It's been 20 plus years of Spider-Man movie. I wanted to wait. I actually wanted to do this video a long time ago. <laughs> I cannot breathe under here. Let me take this off. I actually wanted to do a Spider-Man tier list a long time ago, but I was like, No Way Home came out. And then I heard Cross the Spider-Verse is coming out. And I was like, you know what? I want to give everybody, everybody's chance to showcase their best selves. Unfortunately, one of them didn't quite get the chance to do that. But I wanted everybody to at least have a sequel, right? So I wanted to wait until Miles Morales had a sequel. To, I know he's having another sequel to come out, but I was like, it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and do this video. So as the super mega ultra Spider-Man fanboy that I am, and since I am correct always in everything, objectively, I thought it makes sense for me to rank all of these Spider-Man IP movie you got s tier for spider-man greatness a tier b tier c tier and sh just straight ass but before we get to that a word from our sponsors this video is sponsored by the rig father's day is coming up and i'm sure every single one of you except the ones who have fathers that ran out and got some milk and never came back here's a chance to get an easy yet sufficient gift for your father than ever with one of the biggest sales of the year for Father's Day. We've seen our fathers with those dusty old wallets. Well, the Ridge wallet expands up to 12 cars plus room for cash while remaining slim as possible with 30 plus colors of carbon fiber, burnt titanium, forged ember. Designed with RFID blocking materials. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds fancy and apparently it protects from digital pickpocketers with an optional air tag attachment so that you'll never lose your wallet again. And you can't forget the Ridge key cases that securely hold up to six keys to prevent them from jiggling. See that raging ember? See how smooth, you see how sweet that is? You see how sweet that is though? Oh wallet. Yeah man, that holds quite a bit. <laughs> Look at Look how smooth that is. Yeah, I'm keeping this. Ridge being the generous lads that they are, is letting you test drive it for up to 99 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't like it. With durable material meaning each wallet because with a lifetime warranty. So y'all get the best Father's Day gift that you can or even get one for yourself using my link of course, ridge.com slash west right now and save up to 40%. 40%! So click on my link on my channel. It also helps me out with the channel. And thank you Ridge for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the video. So we're gonna start off, I'm pretty sure these are like the old Spider-Man movies. Now, these are like the old movies. I haven't seen these. So, and I ain't going back to watch anything from the 70s. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and say haven't seen. Haven't seen. Now to get to where we're all waiting for. Okay, starting for where it started all. The original Spider-Man. And I gotta say, man, this is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie even to this day. That being said, I still think I wanna put this in A tier because going back and watching it, I would say the pacing of it wasn't the best. It, it had some weird pacing, I ain't gonna lie. It would just kinda jump to things. Early enough, I wouldn't say it's like the greatest superhero movie of all time, but it's my personal favorite. I have the most fun with it. It's the original origin story of all these movies. It, 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 it's Toby. It's Toby, fam. It's Toby. But yeah, still, still a great, uh, no, yeah, yeah, it's fine that day. It's fine, I think that's, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. It's not that it's not Spider-Man greatness. I probably should change this tier. Cause it's Spider-Man greatness. I just don't think it's like the most goaded. Yeah, let me check this. Cause it's still Spider-Man greatness. That's, like, that's not fair to say. I think it's like, when I mean Spider-Man, I mean like just goaded. Like truly the best of the best. Like one of the best superhero movies. I think it's fine there. Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man goaded. Like that's, It's, it's, Sp it's Spider-Man 2. It's Spider-Man 2. Okay, there's some people that try to take away from Spider-Man 2, like some people try to take away from The Dark Knight. Those peoples are donuts. They don't know what they're talking about, but I got I got it as Spider-Man goaded. Spider-Man 3. 
I don't care what you say. It's going into B tier, fam. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people say. I don't care. I don't care. The, the more I, I think about it, the more I like it. I think Spider-Man 3 is actually pretty damn good. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. I do not care what any... You just like it for the memes. No, I liked it when it first came out. And now some people are starting to appreciate it more. Maybe because of the memes. But even before the memes, I always knew. That Bully Maguire was the GOAT. You can say what you want. I ain't saying Venom is the greatest Venom that we possibly could have had. I get that. But I still got what they was going for. I still think the Sandman story was freaking great. I still think they did uh, the, the spider suit, the Venom suit, the Venom. The whole outlook for Venom for Peter Parker, I still think was done good. Sandman was still done good. It was just Venom that was kind of the problem. With like the, 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 the Venom Venom. That was the only, like, kind of issue. Everything else is, I, I think, was really good. Okay, I don't care what nobody say, bro. I got him beat, bro. This movie. Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, this movie's kind of boring. <laughs> it's not a, it's not even a bad movie, per se. I would probably put it in C, um, just for an average film. Like, it's just not really memorable. The lizard is not very memorable. Uh, I would say Andrew is fine, I think, as Spider-Man. I didn't really like the skater boy aspect they try to implement with him. But I, I still, it still, it has some of the most gorgeous shots. Like a lot of emphasis was on this web slinging. A lot of emphasis was on the Gwen Stacy and Andrew Garfield romance, which was the best romance. All of these Spider-Man movies, I think Gwen and Miles might be a pretty close second so far. We'll see how that ends up in the end but i would still say yeah gwen stacy and andrew garfield's spider-man has the best romance i i think it did a pretty good job at that but the whole movie as a whole was just eh it was just boring it was just dull it was a very dull movie so for me i gotta see tier amazing spider-man 2 straight ass <laughs> straight i don't know what the fuck they was thinking even andrew was just like yeah they weren't letting me do what i needed to do what or what i wanted to do with spider-man and everything i don't you can see when spider-man started deteriorating okay <laughs> so you, can, you can see where it started to like you know trend downward okay those weren't the best of times for spider-man fans okay we was going through a lot at that time we was going through a lot at that time homecoming a tier straight up a tier i love homecoming i love everything it tried to do i love everything it's about i thought tom holland for a high schooler 15 16 year old boy he played that perfectly i think all the teenagers they weren't annoying um iron man was a great mentor in the movie and trying to get peter to come out of his shell to be Spider-Man, but not Iron Boy Jr. <laughs> We're talking about the Iron Boy Jr. <laughs> later on. Y'all know what movie I'm referring to. Um, and at the end of him showcasing his OG suit, going up against the Vulture, which I always thought the Vulture was kind of lame, but they actually made the Vulture somewhat menacing, someone you can be empathetic towards, someone that's a threat. And I feel like the only, like, big criticism a lot of people even had for homecoming he's like it didn't really feel that important it was like that's the point he's your friendly neighborhood spider-man he's dealing with his neighborhood problems and homecoming i feel like is the only one of all of these spider-man movies honestly yeah really with all of these spider-man movies where it felt like the threat just pertained to peter parker himself it, everything else felt like either the, the multiverse is on the line, the city was on the line, the universe was on the line. It just, it felt like the way it was just monumental in probably all the other Spider-Man movies. I don't know if people were just so used to like the Avengers and everything that they was dealing with. They Everybody was kind of downplaying what Spider-Man had to deal with, but Spider-Man is like, it's a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Not everything has to be uh, monumental, world, world shattering, city shattering. It's more of a personal story and I enjoyed every second of it. Venom. I don't care. I don't like these movies. Anybody that liked these movies, I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what you're watching to like. Maybe it's because. No, I don't. I don't. I can't. I can't. Maybe because Tom Hardy, maybe. Maybe because Venom is kind of funny sometimes. 
But except for Venom being having a couple of funny lines and his design looking cool and you liking Tom Hardy, what, what else about this movie is likable? One, this needs to go in the garbage just for ruining Carnage alone. This, I don't even remember who the villain of this was. <laughs> That's how ass this movie was. From the plot from beginning to end, Venom is straight ass. I don't care what anybody say. I know there's probably some Venom people in the comment section. I don't care. It's garbage. Accept it. Live with it. Learn it. It's ass. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Straight up A tier. Definitely A tier movie. Some people were probably having a Spider-Man go to even after I came out of the theater. I didn't really say, I never said this was the greatest Spider-Man. Uh, Miles Morales. You know, come, you know, you know, get me on a workout plan. You know, I can be your Miles Morales. I thought he was really good. Um, I like Gwen Stacy. I like what they did with Peter Parker in the movie. The yard style, of course, is fantastic. But yeah, I think A tier is a great point to put Spider Man to the Spider Verse. I didn't think it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I enjoyed it. Spider Man Far From Home. Every cell in my being. Wants to put the wants me to put this in straight ass, but then I was thinking about it. I was like, I think that's a little unfair to group these movies together with Spider-Man: Far From Home. I would say these movies have deep, deep narrative issues, pacing issues. Everything about these movies ha just have issues. Spider-Man: Far From Home. I would say from point A to point Z, it's not like the worst thing in the world. Like, from point A to point Z throughout the movie, even though I have some contention with some of the things that were happening within the movie. I don't think it was the worst thing in the world. Same thing how I feel about Amazing Spider-Man. I think both of these movies are kind of boring. From Mysterio, I know a lot of people keep saying, Mysterio, Mysterio. Yes, I know Mysterio is really good in the movie, but I don't think Mysterio, I don't think one good aspect say is going to save an entire movie. The kids were annoying in this. Ned was annoying with this. The MJ and Peter thing was heavily rushed. MJ was still annoying in this. It felt like Peter... It felt like Disney had an agenda and it kind of infused into this movie to where they wanted Spider-Man to kind of be or take up the mantle of what Iron Man is to Marvel and they kind of wanted to make that Spider-Man. Also with the whole gadget thing, I'm still, I'm not a big Spider-Man gadget guy even for the new game or even for any other Spider-Man movie where he just so heavily needs gadgets. I've always hated that. I still hate that. This movie has the most. This movie is one of the biggest culprits to that. Overall, Far From Home, not my jam. Not the worst thing in the world. I'm gonna keep it at C. Spider-Man No Way Home. As people try to defend this, I will trash it. As people try, 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 attempt to rewrite history, I will not let it. No Way Home is Spider-Man goaded. I don't care what you say. At the end of the day, it did what it was trying to do. Villains all did a great job. Every character did a decent job. Ned and MJ wasn't annoying. There was so much weight to this movie. It wasn't just, oh, we just win and we go home. Okay, that, uh, him walking into the snow and knowing that his friends don't remember him. Heartbreaking, he's like, this is a masterful scene. Him finally realized what Spider-Man he wanted to be at the end, and that web slinging in this masterpiece. The web slinging between all the Spider-Mans, Toby, Andrew, all the villains came in from beginning to end. This movie was entertaining. Some people were like, well, this movie didn't really get really going until Toby and uh, Andrew came in. It was like, well, you just ignored the fact that the villains were in the majority of the movie. Green Goblin, one of the better villains. I mean, he's, he is one of the best villains of all time, but he was one of the best villains in this movie, right? And he even made it even more legendary in this movie. I don't care what you say. Spider-Man, No Way Home is goaded. Not better than Spider-Man 2, so I'm putting it here, but it's still one of the goaded Spider-Man movies. Period, point blank, it ends there. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I already talked about it a little bit, in my previous video on Spider-Man, this movie was damn near perfect. Truly, I mean, truly it was. I They took, this movie walked so this movie could run. I was surprised. I feel like Into the Spider-Verse threw out a lot of jokes in there that didn't hit. And I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of didn't love it as much. It, it, it's fine if not every joke hits. But it's like when you constantly trying out the jokes and it ain't hitting, you know what I'm saying? It kind of like, eh, you're getting a little annoying. 
Cross the Spider-Verse did not have that problem. I was dying through the whole entire movie. The art style, like I said, this movie walked so this movie could run. The art and the way that they did the animation in this movie was second to none one of the best things I've ever seen in an animation standpoint. Miguel was that nigga. Miles was that nigga. Gwen was that nigga. The way they sprinkled all the Spider-Mans in there. I heard the chase scenes, the first chase scene with all the Spider-Mans and the Miguel chase scene. I think they said, I heard it took them like four years just to do those scenes. You can see it. You can see it in what they was trying to do. You could, you could see the passion in this movie. It, it truly, Spider-Man goaded, and I will put this over No Way Home. I mean, this movie was fantastic. Spot ended up being a really really good build up villain for what is worth um we could get the sinister six in the next at least i'm pretty sure i heard sinister six i'm pretty sure that's what i heard maybe i was wrong but i'm pretty sure i heard sinister six what they did with the multiverse this is just you know playing with the multiverse done right truly it is i'm not gonna put it over spider-man 2 in my opinion in fact i still think that Spider-Man 2, rewatching it and seeing it to this day, it's still the GOAT. I thought it was the GOAT when I was a kid. I grew, I got older and I was like, eh, is it really the GOAT? Re like rewatching it, uh, yeah, it's the GOAT, okay? Uh, I know some people wanna crown this one. I know some people wanna crown this one. I know that some people wanna crown these two. Um, I know some people are big Andrew Garfield fans. Sorry if you're a big Andrew Garfield fan and I trust your favorite, but this one's the GOAT. It is Stop and Toby's the GOAT. Does Miles have a chance in the third movie? Yes. Continuing what they did on, if they have like an end game effect going from Infinity War to end the game, could it surpass the GOAT? Possibly. But right now, I would say Spider-Man 2 is still the GOAT. Uh, but then you have Morbius. I was wrong, okay, the true goat. The greatest thing since sliced bread, okay, truly the savior of movies as we know it. Cinema! Morbius. This is peak. This is cinema. This is what we all go to the theaters for, okay? Fuck all these other movies, who cares about this? It's all about Morbius, cinema. Peak! It was so great they put it out twice. <laughs> I can't believe that. they got manipulated into actually. I'm pretty sure they lost my, more money the second time when they did that. But only something of peak cinema that you really couldn't understand could possibly do that. All right, y'all just not y'all ain't caught up on that Morbius game yet. That's all it is. <laughs> kind of feel bad for Jared Little. <laughs> anyway, this is my Spider Man list. Uh, so share, comment, like, tell me what you think down below. I'm right though, so it is what it is, okay? I am right! And keep on being amazing. Peace of two fingers.